In this lecture, we're going to review resonance, and specifically, we're going to talk about determining important resonance contributors. When we have multiple resonance structures, we need to identify which ones are the most important resonance contributors. This is a list of factors that decrease stability of resonance contributors, and I have this in approximate order of importance. The first one is atoms that don't satisfy the octet rule. So this is a destabilizing effect, and if you have an atom that doesn't satisfy the octet rule, then this, the resonance structure that has this atom is going to be a less significant contributor. Also, if you have a resonance structure that has a less stable carbocation, this is also going to be a less significant contributor. If you add charges, that is going to decrease the importance of the resonance contributor. And if you have a negative charge on an atom that isn't the most electronegative atom, this is another factor that decreases the stability of resonance contributors. Another factor that decreases the stability of resonance contributors is a positive charge on an atom that isn't the most electropositive atom. In this first example, we have a negative charge on a carbon on the left resonance structure and a negative charge on the oxygen in the right resonance structure. And just to make sure everyone understands what's going on in terms of electrons, I'm going to highlight the lone pair in red, and that becomes the double bond in red. And the double bond on the oxygen becomes that blue lone pair up there. So these are our two resonance structures, and if we're comparing these, we have to go through the list on the previous slide. So we don't have any atoms that don't satisfy the octet rule, so that doesn't apply. We also don't have any carbocations or addition of charges, so we can ignore two and three. So let's look at four. We have a negative charge in a carbon and a negative charge in an oxygen. So we're going to invoke rule number four, and the negative charge on the oxygen is going to be the greater contributor because we like having negative charges on more electronegative atoms. We don't want the negative charge on the less electronegative atom. Here's another example. In this case, we are moving red electrons down to form a double bond, and blue electrons came over. So those are the blue electrons there. Well, what happened here? We have a molecule, and we added charges. So that's no good. If we go back and look at our rules, we're going to apply rule three here. In our two resonance structures, we added charges to the structure on the right, so the first structure is the greater contributor. Here's another example. In this one, make sure you draw out your hydrogen. And your lone pairs. The red lone pair moves here to form the double bond. So that's how we go from the structure on the left to the structure on the right. The carbon on the left only has three bonds, and so it doesn't have an octet. And that means we have an octet rule violator in our left structure. So our greater contributor is the one on the right. Here's another example. And I recommend with this example that you pause the video and give this a try on your own, and then we'll do it together. Don't forget to draw on your hydrogen, so that's helpful. Now let's compare these resonance structures in terms of contribution to the resonance hybrid. In this left structure, we have an octet rule violator. This is also an octet rule violator. So is this one, 
and this one. So all of these structures have octet row violators. So we can't really apply rule number one. Let's look at rule number two. Here we have a secondary carbocation. This one's also secondary, and so is this one. That one, though, is primary. So this is going to be contributing the least to our resonance hybrid. Let's try this next example. Again, I recommend you pause the video and see if you can do it on your own. Again, I find it helpful to draw in hydrogens. And lone pairs. Okay, now let's compare. Here we have an octet row violator, and here we have another octet row violator. So this first structure is the only one that doesn't have an octet row violator, so it will contribute the most. Now we can even differentiate these next two structures because we have a tertiary carbocation versus a secondary carbocation. So the secondary carbocation is going to contribute the least. Hopefully that gets you started in how to determine important resonance contributors. I recommend you try some clicker questions and practice problems to get the hang of this concept.